Hello, this is Andrew from Sprog DCC. Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the new Raspberry Pi 5 to run JMRI with our PySprog 3 family. These instructions assume you have a Raspberry Pi 5 running the Bookworm operating system with SSH enabled. They assume a wired connection to your home network with VNC Viewer installed on a Windows PC. It should not be difficult to adapt the instructions to Mac or Linux hosts or to follow them with a the keyboard and screen connected directly to the Raspberry Pi. Due to some compatibility issues, the first thing we need to do is turn on the X11 Display Manager. Open the Windows Command Prompt and connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. Start the Raspberry Pi Configuration tool Select Advanced Options, then Wayland, and then select X11, OK, and OK, and Reboot. Wait for the Raspberry Pi to reboot, and then reconnect with SSH and open the configuration tool again. We will enable VNC for remote access to the Raspberry Pi desktop. You don't need to do this if you're only ever going to use a keyboard and display connected directly to the Raspberry Pi. Type exit or control D to quit the SSH session and then close the command prompt window. We will set a new hostname for the Raspberry Pi, set the screen resolution for remote access and enable the serial port or UART. We'll use the VNC viewer to remotely connect to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Open the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. Changing the host name is optional, but it can be useful if you think you may use more than one Raspberry Pi in the future. The headless resolution defaults to a fairly small screen area, so set this to something more reasonable. Finally, we want to enable the serial port, as this is the communications channel for the Pi Sprog. And then we must reboot for all the changes to take effect. If you assigned a new host name, then you will need to close the VNC window and reconnect using the new host name. Otherwise, VNC should automatically reconnect once the Pi Sprog reboots. The next task is to ensure that our Raspberry Pi operating system is completely up to date. Open the Software Update tool to install updates. You need to enter your password and then click OK. Downloading and installing the updates can take quite a few minutes, so we'll skip ahead at this point. When connected remotely, with no physical display directly attached to the Raspberry Pi, the performance of the desktop can be very slow, especially with the Chromium browser. So we'll make a configuration change to fix that. We'll use a terminal window to edit the command line.txt file as shown in the following steps to add a command to set the display resolution. You should set the resolution to the same as that chosen for the headless resolution in the Raspberry Pi configuration in a previous step. In our example it's 1600 by 1200. You might want to pause the video here so you can see exactly what's been entered. Write out the new contents of the file and quit the editor and then reboot the system. VNC should reconnect automatically once the system is rebooted and then we'll set up the UART flow control. At the time this video is created, a bug in the UART setup means that we must edit the config.txt file and remove the CTS-RTS parameter from the UART overlay. Follow the steps on the screen.
Follow this by manually enabling the RTS and CTS flow control signals on the GPIO pins. You can check that the settings have been applied correctly and then close the terminal window. Now it's time to download and install Java 11, which is required for JMRI compatibility. Open the Chromium web browser and search for or navigate to the Azul Java website. Scroll down and select Java 11, Linux operating system, ARM 64-bit architecture and the JRE. Download the Debian package .deb and then wait for the download to complete. Find the link to the download instructions and review the instructions. We'll open a terminal window and apply these instructions now. Now it's time to download JMRI. When this video is created, the latest production version is 5.4, so that's what we will download. When the download is completed, we can install JMRI. Open the file manager and follow the steps in the video to extract the JMRI files from the archive that we just downloaded. Make sure the tick box for the containing directory is ticked and then select directory to extract to. In this example, I extract it to my home directory, home pi. Click on extract and then just wait for the process to complete. You'll see that a JMRI directory has been created and this holds all of the files for JMRI. To make it easy to start the JMRI programs, we will now create some desktop icons. We need to change a setting in the file manager so that the operating system doesn't query us every time we try to launch an executable file from the desktop. Open the terminal window and create the two files, one for Panel Pro and one for Decoder Pro. Take care to copy the contents exactly but change the paths if you did not install JMRI into the HomePy directory.
Panel Pro and Decoder Pro are just different front ends for the JMRI software. Both can do everything that JMRI can do. Traditionally, Panel Pro is used for layout control, Decoder Pro is used for programming TCC decoders. We'll now set up Panel Pro and the Throttle server to allow connections from phones and other devices running the engine driver or Throttle apps. Start Panel Pro by double click on the icon that we created in the previous step. You can close the help window that opens, we don't need this at the moment. When the preferences window appears, you need to select Sprog DCC Generation 5 and then PySprog 3 V2 or PySprog 3 Plus and then select the TTY AMA 10 serial port. Now go to the Y Throttles tab and click the button to start with the application. Save your changes and restart Panel Pro. Now when Panel Pro restarts you'll see that the Y Throttle server has also started up automatically. Quit Panel Pro. Now start Decoder Pro by double clicking on its icon and go through a similar process to set up the connection preferences. Create a new connection and give it a name. Click OK and go through the wizard. I should have kept the Sprog 3 Plus setting here but changed it accidentally. Quit Decoder Pro when it opens. Now we want to set up the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi as an access point to allow connections from other devices running engine driver and Y throttle applications. To begin with, you need to set up your Wi-Fi country, in our case, Great Britain. Select the advanced options and create a wireless hotspot. Give it a network name, for example, the same as the host name, in our case, Sprog Pi 5. Set up the security. Enter a password, which you must remember. And then click create. You should now be connected. We now want to set the access point to start up automatically when the Raspberry Pi boots. So open the terminal window, type the command as shown, and then follow the steps to edit the wireless connection and enable the automatically connect option. And quit out, and then next time the Raspberry Pi is booted, the access point should be available. For headless operation with no screen or keyboard connected to the Raspberry Pi, we want Panel Pro to start up automatically when the Raspberry Pi boots up. Open the terminal window and create the directory as shown. Then copy the file and then edit the file that you've just copied. Add the last line with the path to Panel Pro in the directory where you extracted the JMRI files in an earlier step. You should now find that Panel Pro starts automatically when the Raspberry Pi is rebooted. You should also see that the Wi-Fi access point has started up. That concludes this video looking at the setup of the Raspberry Pi 5 with the Bookworm operating system and the PySprog 3 family. If you have any questions, please do get in touch. Look out for future videos and please consider subscribing to our channel.